My name is Junior Flemings, current national team player, and subscribe to Ryan LFC for the latest and exclusive content. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel, guys. The boy Ryan LFC back again, guys. Another exclusive interview. Reggae boy, superstar. When I say superstar, I'm not talking about superstar in Batman brief. I'm telling you about real superstar. The former Jamaica College superstar and the former Tivoli Garden player now play in the America and he has done so fantastic for the Reggae Boys national team. Welcome, Junior Flemings. Thank you very much to take the time out and come share your story with us. How are you doing today? Yeah, man. Thanks, everyone. I'm good. Actually, you know, we're away now uh, in Atlanta uh, getting ready for a game tomorrow. So, all is well. So, how are you coping with the COVID and stuff? Well, I, <laughs> I got the COVID uh, last November while in Saudi Arabia with the national team. So, that's behind me right now. And, you know, I got, you know, both shot for the vaccine. So, I'm not really worried about it too then, but I try to stay safe and healthy at the same time. So how you feel when you get the COVID? Tell the people them a little bit about it and how you feel when you take the vaccine. Uh to be honest, never really feeling different. Um could I say one thing like me have a little joint being, you know, all over everywhere, no one then, but it wasn't anything major, it wasn't anything concerning and you know, when I heard that the vaccine was available to take, like, you know, I wasn't against it, you know, so I was one of the first players who actually stepped up and be like, you know, I will get it in this, get it over with. So everything was pretty good after that. So what is the daughter doing? I know he's a family man and you have a kid. So what are the kids doing and your girlfriend? Well, they're good, you know. He's good, always, you know, watching me and stuff. And then sometimes he can tell me how the game goes and stuff. So it's good, you know? Great. My first question to you. Tell us a little bit about your childhood life growing up and where you're from and stuff. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> childhood life, grew up first and foremost. And maybe a lot of people don't even know, like, we used to the track and field first and foremost. Like, they like to play ball. And then, you know, one day out of the blues, we just decided to say, you know, try the football thing. You know, when, you know, we used to play high go football and, you know, every now and then. And only thing we used to do, they used to just kick the ball over the top and, you know, we used to run, you know, and score. And then back then, they might say, you know, fast and foolish, but guess what? One thing, I get the ball at the back of the net. So no matter what, but you know, you're going to have people have the both sides of the story and thing. Then, Went to train to Tivoli under 13. First year, you know, we have Junior McGregor and Radico Wellington and all those guys who were way ahead of me. Like, I mean, way, like, I was nowhere near them in terms of talent or anything. Went to train uh, for the U13 and, you know, funny enough, my first training session, like, I had a Air Force on, like, I had my mom's Air Force on, my mom's shoes. So I didn't have any shoes to play in anything. I had, a, I had a cut a jeans to turn it in shorts, button up shirt, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, when I went to practice and I realized everyone was looking at me, they're like, where's this guy going? Like, you know, there's no way he's going to play football. You know, but to be honest, it didn't bother me in terms of all, oh, you know, I dress and, you know, obviously I wasn't in the appropriate clothing for the sport, but hey. I want to play football, so why not? You know what I mean? So when I get there, you know, we're training over by a separate, you know, Tivoli Garden, and then Mr. Burnett, you know, uh, to be honest, it's like every time I call him, it's like, you know, I get goosebumps, but he was the one that really, you know, like put my career forward, like gave me an opportunity, you know, to let people really see me and see what I can do. So when I went to practice, so Mr. Burnett said, you know, we should run a couple laps around the field. I was jogging and then my lace un untied. Then I stopped to tie it. And then he was like, you, like in that plaid shirt, when you go around, 
just go through the, the hole and, and go home. And literally, I run all the way around the field, go through the hole, and I run straight home, went home and cry and everything. So the first year, I um, watched, you know, watch under 13 the entire year, and I watched Junior Agaga, Arika Wellington, and play. I was never actually play. I was in the stands. Next year, I'm going to come back and say, you know, I'm going to try again. Um, I literally go and you know, go feet and from that year, you know, I kept in the under 13 in my first year, you know, and there was ahead of me and all that. And then from there on out, it was like, you know, like a stepping stone, like a building block, you know. Mr. Bernard used to always tell them, say, one thing, you know, it comes down to discipline and, and time and all that stuff there, you know, like, I'm take the box and stuff, but these don't me, they really know what me you want for do and when we did start play football, I think it was probably like, you know, a little bit too late to, you know, 12, around, you know, 12, 13-ish, you know, I think that was late, you know, really, and too late for look point like that at the first time, actually, they must start play, otherwise, um, you know, just go kickball and, and thing randomly. And so they were, them did we ahead of me and thing, and then, you know, from under 13, I'm start captain, under 13, I'm captain, under 15 and 17, under 21, you know, I kept in Premier League team <clears throat> uh, a few times also, but it just goes to show, you know, my determination and my passion with the sport after, you know, that first year when I actually started playing football. And every, funny enough, every time in my off season when I'm in Jamaica, Mr. Burnett would call me, you know, you there in Jamaica and say, yeah, you know, you want to come and, you know, share the story, you know, with the younger youth and, you know, tell them that whole on my first training session, I'm off to send my home and things like that. And, you know, I never really make that get to me. You know, I go home and, you know, work hard. I come back the next year and from there on, like, I captain every team, you know, yes, coach. And, you know, the respect that I have for him, you know, is on another level. You know, so he was the one who really gave me an opportunity to showcase my talent and, you know, to go for it. Most definitely, because... At the time when I was playing under 13, under 15, under 17, under 20, under 21, he was a Tivoli Garden captain. And that simply means he's a very good leader from a tender age and Kevin Blackwood. But I want to go back a little bit. Tell us about your early life in growing up in Tivoli and what school you attend from primary right up before you go to Jamaica College. So, um, we used to go to Calabar in front of primary and junior high. I mean, never get to play primary league. Go back to the same point again, you know, Junior McGregor and Radico Wellington, those players, you know. Every time after school, you know, I'm actually come home, we used to come home and come here and say, yo, you know, we'll play primary league match today and, you know, then I'm doing versus Concrete or Holy Family versus the school. And then you know, we used to say, damn. You know, because my school, you know, it was a junior high school, so we never in a primary league and anything like that. So, we didn't miss out on the entire primary league, you know, never playing a ball at that time. And then, uh, do GSAT, you know, I'm actually for, um, find out some parts of JC and thing and go JC and first year, same thing, start training, you know, for Pepsi, actually captain it, you know, from there on out and then, you know, that's the same thing that happened in Tivoli. Captain the under thir- under fourteen Pepsi, under sixteen calls and the money cup, which everybody know and stuff. But yeah, I think it just goes to show, you know, the progress and you know the love I started to develop for the sport at an early age and also with a lot of discipline and hard work, which a lot of people I don't think, you know, realize that you know about me. Like I'm a winner. Everywhere we go, you know, we win, um, we determine, you know, the attitude has a lot to do with it. And we just hope, you know, some of the younger players that will come up now, you know, get to understand, say, it's not about talent. It's not about how much money can shift, not about how much money can sell at that pile. You know, it's about, you know, you putting in the work. Because one thing we can guarantee you putting in the work, like, yeah, I go see the result. You know, so it's about, you know, that discipline and attitude and that mentality to work hard. And once you do that, you know, the sky's on it. Most definitely. And he has been a very good player. A lot of people 
say Junior Flemings is one of the best schoolboy football player in the last two decades. You know what I mean? With your success, he has been playing Manning Cup. You win, win a lot of stuff with Jamaica College. But talk to us about your experience. First time playing Manning Cup for Jamaica College with Ashani Walker and stuff. Talk us through that, your first Manning Cup. Yeah, so that year... Um, and what year just start to play Manning Cup? Because a lot of people say you probably play four or five. You play a lot of Manning Cup, man. <laughs> How, yeah, how many so Manning Cup you play? Five? We start play from 2014. No, 20, no 2010. No, I can't start be, play. man. From 2010, man. 2010, my bad. No, I'm starting to start play from 14 years old. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, you, so you start 20, playing Ashan Walker. Your first Manning yeah, Cup you played Ashan four, Walker. Yeah, 14 years old. So at yeah. 13, 13 years old, I won Pepsi. Pepsi All Island, and then you know the Manning Cup coach, it was Alfred Henry, you know, come by and he's like, you know, I'm seeing my maturity and my, my the level of understanding for you know, for the game, and you know, he more of it, you know, step it up and that time. So that that year I skipped calls, I never went up the calls. I went straight to Manning Cup, went to camp with Ashani and Shamal Thomas and Nicholas Scott, you know, all them players, and you know, at 14 years old, you know. Go camp, you know, do my thing, and you know, coach Alfred tell him, say, listen, you know, yeah, you know, I'm a four team, but if everybody realizes him, tell him attitude, you know, and him work ethic, you know, from him there, and you know, I'm humble, you know, I'm going to be one of the start of them where you know, I go play. And I was it's so crazy at 14 years old, you know, I play with Ashana Walker, them, you know, and actually I start in another team there, you know, it was my first year I'm on the cup. Um, win Triple Crown that you know that that year the Manning Cup, Oliver Shield and the Walker Cup, and then from there I know you know I had a a, a conversation with Ashani and he was like, listen, you know I passed down the number seventy year and I think you are the person because Jamaica College as a as a know like we're normally already seven you know normally the team normally depending on them them and them normally have to bring the team like the ship and you know, show that leadership there. You know, so, you know, talk to me and, you know, tell me, say, you know, he might hand down to me and, you know, expect great things from me. And from there on now, you know, I'm just, you know, take charge and do what I have to do and pass and see him leadership, you know, when we get from Sani and, you know, the older guys and, you know, the rest was history from there on out. Most definitely, because I remember that first time you played in Manning Cup, the first game I watched you play, um, in Manning Cup over Portmore. I think Portmore either used a field over, over Portmore when you guys play. I think Waterford or Bridgeport and you guys oh, play. Yeah. Yes, I remember that first. I think a Waterford you guys play over there. Yeah. And the commentator were talking about young Junior Fleming at the age of 14 playing Manning Cup. And I always said, I want to be like Junior Fleming. I swear to God, people, I'm telling you. Because he started out early. When Junior Fleming's playing Manning Cup, I'm still not even ready to um, go to high school. I was still at, um, I think I was still at um, Coburn Garden or Tachima, still at um, Junior High School at the time. So my aim is to always to play in the Manning Cup and stuff. But you, have a, you, you played some great team. And talk about a little bit about how Miguel Cole Molia to be this big superstar, one of the greatest players of Jamaica College. Yeah. <clears throat> um after 2010, 2011, uh 2012, you know, Alfred Henry decided, you know, to no longer be a in a part of the um no longer be in charge as a coach. So, <clears throat> you know, the management team you know, go ahead and, you know, recruited Coach Coley. And the first day, I remember, you know, when him, you know, come come a training, you know, all up at JC and... When when Coley become the manager? 2014? Uh, 13. 13? Yeah. That's when me and... That's when Blackwood and them have done last year, I think. Yeah. 
But yeah. my last year is 24. Yo, you know, Jamaica College is one of the luckiest team you ever play against. Why you say? You think I'm luck? <laughs> Lucky. Which year excels I want to play? Um, yeah, man. Remember the game that I can't win? bring? And they got penalty? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Remember the game, man. You're lucky. All your penalty, you're lucky, bro. I <laughs> know you know where I go. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to I know they know where I go. I never, I never use them. I just kick it and kick it with PS. Yeah, but what the coach tell you guys after you guys get the first penalty? Because I realize everyone has single now. You guys get the penalty and they go. Yeah, no. Um, during the entire week they were practice, and you know, the penalty, entire penalty shooter. We know you're good in the year, and anything above me, I, you know, like a quick fit, you know, latch on to. So the whole EM, you know, every. Whoever kick to whichever spot, you know, just make sure you know you go low, and that was if you have an eye, you know, put it closer to the can and so. But we got our best to make sure you know keep on the ground, and we don't know we have successful. Yeah, because I remember when you kicked the first penalty on the coach. I don't remember the player the coach car and the coach. Me feel like the coach tell him say you kick it very low, and most of the penalty, I must say the penalty them was fantastic because. I, me, me very good in penalty, and the penalty them like kick close to the post. They kick anything up past the goalkeeper at him knee, anything go down this from him knee, go right down. Once you kick it away from him a little bit and pace, he have yeah. no chance because for reflect go way down there, so very powerful. But what Man United goalkeeper that they are, do know, instead of him trying to go down there, so by the time he's going down there, the ball <laughs> fly past him, start using him legs, so you find out more goalkeeper start to. Learn how to use them to block the shots and stuff because Man United goalie has been successful as that. But a few times, me and you fuck up always 2050, um, under 15, under 13, under 21. You always scope on me. What you do? <laughs> to be honest, I mean, I've ever seen, especially when we play against Boys Town, you know, it's a rival game that, you know, so I always try to go all out. And as I say, you know, most of the team I want to play for, you know, um, as my game started better and better, you know, over the years, you know, I realized, say, you know, I have to make it happen. You know, I can't really depend to say, okay, you know, uh, leave the game at chance. You know, once I step on the pitch, you know, if I'm going to score, I have to try to make sure, you know, set up, you know, the team in a good position, you know, for be successful. But I didn't know, you know, so the weight of the team, they, you know, they always depend on me at that time. So, we never have a choice, but I have to step up whenever. So whenever, you know, have a choice, we find excuses, you know, there's always, you know, another opportunity to show up and perform. And that was it. Yeah. So you've done everything we have to do at Jamaica College. You've done great thing at Tivoli Garden. We know a lot of trophy with Tivoli Garden. Tell us about your experience when you leave high school, when you are no more a high school player. And I must say you do very well in the Premier League. Guys, that's been chucked in Junior Flemings. Listen, my interview with Junior Flemings, I don't have to do no research. I know everything out of me. Yet, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's someone where I know a lot about. Tell us about your experience leaving school, coming to the Premier League in a very good team on the team. Yeah, um, right after I'm... Uh... Finish player, you know, schoolboy football, you know, make the transition. Even before I actually leave school, you know, I was playing Premier League. So every time when Manning Cup normally finish, you know, we normally go and, you know, play in the Premier League. And, you know, me always get the question a lot why I have to play Premier um Manning Cup and come over to play Premier League. I always, you know, pretty much come and, you know, I start right away, you know, 15 and I play and, you know, but as we said, I'll come that down because every coach, you know, have the same thing we say, like, when it come on to training time, like, we don't mess around. Like, never train hard, never put in the work because one thing we know, we train hard, the games then become easy. And sometimes, I think sometimes, 99.99% of the time, the thing that we do in the game, a reflection of what you do in the, in the training session, then, you know, and things. So, I normally, give a hundred and ten percent in a training so the game becomes way more easier. And to make the transition, you know, for start play for Tivoli, you know, it, it wasn't hard because we'd have 
you know, players like Christopher Jackson, um, Cassie Hines, you know, Elsie Scott, um, Kemar Daly, you know, a lot of those players who had played, you know, at that time for the national team and overseas, you know, was around me, you know, guiding me, you know, especially Kemar Daly. I remember the first season playing in the Premier League and, you know, me and him was actually playing. You know, he was playing behind me and I was playing in front, playing a number 10 spot and, you know, he was basically, you know, on the field coaching me and, you know, giving me some tips and, you know, it was good. You know, good to see, you know, you can learn from that, you know, type of player which, you know, are a high ceiling when it comes on to um, talent and, you know, work hard and, you know, where the sport has brought in. But nonetheless, I think, you know, that's, uh, my career, you know, throughout Jamaica from child coming up, uh, I've won pretty much the leading goal scorer and the, M- and the MVP at pretty much every level. Um, under 13, I think that record will be there for who knows, like a lifetime. You know, I've scored uh, 38 goals in one season. Um, got the leading goal scorer and the MVP for that year. Under 15, the same thing. Leading goal scorer, you know, MVP. Under 17, leading goal scorer. Under 21, I remember playing one year and didn't finish, but I was a leading goal scorer at that point. And I didn't finish play because I was in and out, in and out. And then for the Premier League, my last season, you know, I was on 10 goals before I actually move on you know, to sign for New York Red Bulls. So, you know, it has been a trend in terms of, you know, scoring goals and, you know, become a habit. So I just keep that and just keep working on my craft, which is, you know, finishing and, you know, keep that intensity of working out at all times. Most definitely has achieved a lot in Jamaican football. But talk to us a little bit about the under seven team that went to the World Cup and you didn't make the squad. How you feel about that when the coach tell you you have a next year you can play under 17? At the time, Zelana Barnes, we have some oldness, we have some very good play on that team. Do you think you deserve to be in the court to play <clears throat> in the under 17 World Cup a couple of years ago? How you feel when you miss out? Uh, to be honest, it was a it was a holistic decision in terms of not only thinking about the moment, not only thinking about going at the moment and yeah, everybody wants to play in a World Cup, especially at that level, you know, but it was a decision that I think I was up to this day, I, I didn't regret it because, you know, a lot of people, you know, factored in that decision, you know, Mr. Siago, you know, Tivoli coaches, JC coaches, you know, we actually had a meeting, you know, in terms of that decision and what was better in terms of moving forward. And I think it was the best choice. I mean, at that time as a player, I would want to go, I would want to play, but I think it ended up work out better because at 14 years old, playing on that U17 team that went to the World Cup, you know, and... Uh, you know, I was playing and all that. I don't think I would have matriculated enough to be a starter at that time with you have key players like, you know, um, Omar only, as I said, the Zelana Barnes at that time, you know, the Jason Nick Wright. Williams, Jason Wright. You know, yeah. So those players, I think, were, was a lot, you know, was ahead of me, you know, at that time. So I think going to Mexico at that time in the World Cup, you know, I probably would have played, okay, maybe 20, 25 minutes, you know, in each game. I don't think that would be beneficial enough in my eyes in terms of playing there and then we'll lose out on a full-time opportunity, you know, to represent again. Nonetheless, I uh, made the decision. It was a tough one. And, you know, the following cycle, you know, I was the captain. And we literally was 45 minutes from qualifier again for the U-17 World Cup. We were playing against Canada in Panama. <clears throat> was leading 2-0 at, at halftime. I think when we went in the locker room and everything, you know, everyone kind of got complacent and a little bit too, you know, get ahead of himself a little bit overexcited and be like, yeah, you know, we're going to the World Cup. And you know, keep in mind, guys, we have 45 minutes. It's not over. We have 45 minutes. 
we came out. I um, think that we have won the game already. Canada, obviously, they're down, so they changed the formation to a three in the back at that point. Started putting numbers forward. 90 minutes in the game, we lost that game 4-2. Up until this day, I don't know how we can see four goals in that game. But that was an opportunity, I think, you know, for us to go back to the to the World Cup. And we were in a good spot up until that halftime. And then everything seems to seems you know, downhill from there on out. And I still, up to this day, try to reflect sometime how we lost that game. But, you know, it's behind us. And I definitely learn a lot from it. You know, it's a lesson learned in, in terms of, not being too confident or too ahead of yourself, especially playing international football because what we are concerned international football is the the best set of players coming together to represent their country. So you're not going to have time and space as all you think, or, you know, it's going to be, uh, you know, you're the only one on the field as if you're at the club. And you know, it's going to be a different level, a different intensity. You know, everyone wants to make that mark, you know, on the international scene. And I think that's what we took for granted in the U17. Uh, U17 and I've learned a lot from it and bring it to the U20. In a U20, you know, we had a pretty rough time. I remember that first game we played in the stadium. We were down 2 1. And uh, we got a fall outside of the box, 98 minutes. You know, we had like two minutes on and. Carter Bimbo took up the ball and I said he was going to kick it. I'm like, no, I'm going to take this one. And he was like, you sure? Like, you know, like, let me kick it. Let me kick it at the time. You know, and I was like, no, man, I'm good. I got this. You know, and that was kind of like a, a turning point in my career. You know, the score, you know, a free kick like that, you know, at the U20 level, you know, U20 championship um, to tie that game up, you know, at the last minute, the last kick of the game, you know, and then went on to play for the U23, where we went to 80, you know, to play Olympic qualifiers. Unfortunately, again, we won two games and lost the game. That, the most important game that we should have won to move on to the next stage. And then, you know, I made that transition to the the national team. And then from there, I now uh, uh, started, you know, playing, you know, and being, you know, more consistent and be also being a starter you know, once I'm um, in the squad. So I think, you know, I still have a lot, you know, to work on. I still have a far way to go and I just, you know, want to keep grounded and keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, and just hope for the best in the future. Most definitely. He has accomplished a lot to play for the reggae boys from the youth level come right up. But I want to talk to you about this moment. You go and few um, trials overseas. What went wrong when you go to Valencia? Why you think you didn't make it in you at a young age? And we all know Junior Femme is a superstar player. What's the difference when you go over there and child? So the Valencia situation wasn't uh, an opportunity for us to, to go pro. They, before we actually leave to go to Valencia, they all laid it out, you know, in terms of telling us that, you know, it was an opportunity for us to uh, go and learn and see professional football at, you know, the top level. And I think most importantly, you know, going to Valencia, like I learned a lot, you know, train with the, you know, the first team a couple of times, you know, when one matter, you know, was there before you got transferred to Chelsea, uh, man, uh, before you got transferred to Manu, I should say, you know, and stuff. Um, their IQ, you know, the soccer IQ, everything was a next, like next level. You know that was the th that was the thing that I added to my game that I that I took when I went to Spain. You know, before you get the ball, know what you want to do, know your surrounding, know how much time and space you have on the ball, decision making, um, the right weight of the pass. You know, depend on the run that the player make, which you know part of it, you know your foot if you use, you know, play the ball like you know those little details. You know, I think. When I went to Valencia, I've learned and add to my game. And then from there on out, I realized like, you know, my game started to grow immensely. So Valencia wasn't really an opportunity for us to, to go pro because they have laid that out. You know, it was an opportunity for us to um, grow and learn as a player and develop. And I think most importantly, we did that. And, 
you know, we went on, um, you know, own way to do different stuff, which is good. Great. You make a move um, to the America in 2016, 2017, you signed for New York Red Bull. Start out about that moment. You have um, 52 appearance and 16 goal. Talk about your time, at. Yeah, uh, New York. Um, when I actually got New York, I went to New York on a, on a trial, on a one week trial, complete the one week, and the coach was like, you know, them like them see. And then one stay for another week. Another week come, then I say, you know, then one stay for another week and another week. End up that, you know, stay in New York for like a month. Then it's okay, you know, we have a sign up. You know, at that point, you know, um, we had a meeting with the the first team coach and, you know, they're like, you know, international spot, as you know, you know, in, in America is really tough. And he's like, yeah, you know, we love to have you on the first team roster. However, the international spot, you know, is going to take a toll on us. So, they're going to sign me to the USL team. And then from there, on, the first season, you know, I won the USL, you know, the Supporters Shield and the, um, the Eastern Conference, which was, you know, we won the treble. That was, you know, all three trophy that was up, you know, for grabs. And we won all three. Then I, uh, in that year, I scored eight goals before I got injured. I tore my meniscus. In that in that uh, in that year, closer to the end of the season, and then my second year, uh, I came back, you know, and scored ten goals. And we actually went back to the Eastern Conference final where we lost on PKs. Then after that, you know, we had a <clears throat> a meeting, you know, to decide the future. And you know, I I I was offered a semi guaranteed contract, you know, in New York and. Um, a lot of people might know, and maybe some don't. A semi guarantee, you know, like they can just get up and say, okay, like junior, you know, we went and get a player from Argentina, you know, and we want to sign them instead, and that's just it. You know, so I decided not to take a semi guarantee contract and move on to Tampa, you know, where everything I think was better in terms of uh, the development, um, resources, et cetera. I move on to Tampa, you know, where, you know, I was playing with Joe Cole and <coughs> Marcel Schaefer and all these guys who were playing the Premier League and uh, Bundesliga and stuff. And, you know, everyone's aware of Joe Cole, you know, what he has done. And, you know, he was there, you know, as a good mentor during my time at Tampa. Then, uh, unfortunately, the coach um, got sacked at Tampa. And then another, you know, the guy that used to play, you know, that took over. He's basically a defender, so he changed the system completely. He was playing more defensive with more defenders, and I wasn't having joy playing in that system, you know. So I decided to move on. Uh, I had the option, you know, whether I want to stay or not. So I decided to move on. That's when I move on and go to Phoenix. Went over to Phoenix in first season, scored 14 goals. We won the Supporter Shield, you know, went to the conference semifinal loss. Then last year, you know, Came back, you know, do great stuff. You know, won the Golden Boot. You know, scored 14 goals in 14 appearances, and they actually went to the final. And obviously, everyone knew because of COVID, final didn't get to play. But yeah, that's pretty much um, my career in the USA so far, and uh, actually achieve a, a tremendous feat, which is the first player to have reached 50 goals in the league at such a young age and uh, yeah you know and scored 31 31 goals in 42 appearance in two seasons i mean for a winger you know like that that tops you know because most people average <clears throat> you know eight to 12 goals you know for a winger because most of the time you know you'll be going 1v1 and setting up the striker to finish you know, and if you can put that uh, in your game and, you know, move forward, you know, that's huge right there. Most definitely. He has done very good in the USL. So, yeah, many people would say, why Junior Fleming haven't been in the MLS? What you have to say to the people? But especially a last contract is signed. You know, when I'm a bridging, we're talking. On next vlogger, I say really disappointed because he... 
Junior Femmes is one of my favorite players. We're looking for you to move on to the MLS, especially this season. Yeah, um, what, a, what a lot of people don't understand is that the international sport in America like is tough. And for you to be signed to an MLS team, you know, one, they have to pay for the international sport, which is it depends on your nationality. Two, they have to, you know, pay for all that um, visa and all that issues. So when you actually look at it, not even talking about contract, you know, literally they have to win out and pay like close to like 100,000 just for the whole international spot and all of that. And a lot of teams in terms of, they're saying that, why are they going to go out and spend almost $100,000 for a spot which they could have, you know, handed that down to paying a player. And that's the, the reality of the league. I mean, it's tough, but, you know, it's beyond players' control and, you know, as I said, you know, just has to do with nationality. So the international spot has been a key factor, you know, in the in in America. So once you, you know, get your green card or your citizen, then, you know, it's like that for you to find a team in the MLS. But it's really and truly who really knows the system, know that international spot is, is top, like the next level. And most of these teams, they're looking at, going to sign uh, like a Zlatan, you know, a Matuidi, a Chicharito with their international spot. Like they want, you know, like those top guys who have been at the top level. So really and truly, can you imagine you, you know, playing for Jamaica, playing again, play, uh, going up against Zlatan. So you guys are both international. Like your odds of getting signed, you know, for that probably one in a billion, you know, which is the reality. So that's what they're saying. They would rather go ahead and invest all of that international spot money in a top player or a player from Europe or a player at the highest level, rather than you know like investing or putting that money you know on a Caribbean type player or a player who's playing the <clears throat> in the US. So the international spot has hindered a lot of players um, so far, and it's definitely something that you know, players realize and, you know, start to work on in terms of getting, you know, their stuff together. And so hopefully, you know, we can have a lot more Jamaican back in the league and stuff. But yeah, that's definitely the reason why a lot of us don't really make the, the step of going, you know, in the MLS. And uh, in terms of Europe, Europe was a... Uh, um, a tough decision like there has been I got a lot of offer from Europe um, in Norway you know Denmark Sweden um, there was a lot of factor in, in terms of that in terms of um, uh, where and at the time you know we didn't know if we were going to have a, um, uh, a decision or any form of information on where COVID stand so at that point, you know, it was kind of a decision where I had to, to make to say, okay, do I want to make the transition to <clears throat> go to Europe at that point and, you know, with the entire COVID situation, you know, being stuck, you know, in Europe, six, eight months, 12 months, you know, not playing in the soccer because of COVID, you know, being away from family and, you know, and all that can be really tough, you know, and take a toll. But I think from here on out, I think, you know, that would definitely be an opportunity. And, and at that point, a lot of team, you know, got financially hit, you know, by the COVID because they're saying that they had no fans. So I don't think it was worthwhile. There was a lot of little things that factored in, in terms of me not going, you know, to Europe. But there were definitely opportunities for sure. And it was just beyond the fact of, yeah, like wanted to play in Europe because you have to factor out all those things in terms of, you know, salary and, you know, this is when that, you know, you're going to be away from family and friends and in and all that and the whole COVID situation, you know. So it was definitely a lot of, as I said, like most of my decision is not based 
on the fact that what happened in the moment, like it has gone through a process, you know, I've asked other people for their opinion, you know, and stuff like that. So it's not a decision where I just get up and be like, okay, I want to play in the USL until I'm 30, until I'm 40. No, you know, I am actually working on, you know, and stuff. So hopefully by the end of this season, you know, we should have some great news in terms of my next step and, you know, my next team going forward. Talk us, let us tell us how you feel about when you make a debut for the Jamaica senior team. Yeah, we know you play copy game well for the senior team. Last Gold Cup, talk us at you that and your debut when you make it for the senior team. Yeah, um, actually, with a lot of people, um, maybe don't remember when Schaefer was the, the coach, that was my first time, you know, I got called up for the senior team. Um, that was, I think, uh, 2016. However, I didn't make any appearance. I was on the bench for both World Cup qualifying game against Panama and Haiti. Um, when I actually made my debut was 2017 against um, Guyana in Martinique when we played Caribbean Cup. That was actually when I made my debut for Jamaica. You know, literally, you know, remember um, I played a game there and it was like, you know, it was like a, you know, like a holy, you know, moment in terms of, oh, wow, like, you know, it's actually a reality now. And, you know, it was a proud moment for me in terms of getting that, you know, first cap and so forth. And then after that, you know, I started, you know, factoring more regularly. And then after that, um, the Gold Cup tournament, which everyone saw, you know, I was a starter during the entire tournament. And I was being, you know, one of that player that was basically like a utility player in that entire Gold Cup. You know, I was playing tenor mid, I was playing attacking mid, I was playing on the wing, you know. So wherever the job was needed, you know, to be done, you know, I was more than happy to go there and get the job done. So that's the thing I kind of like, you know. Uh, that flexibility of playing more than one position and you know that tournament you know was a great tournament I was actually the most foul player in that tournament you know because I strive off contact you know so that was kind of like a strength of my game which I know the contact is coming and then I just you know accelerate its pace you know and stuff like that but that tournament was a great tournament and I think it was a stepping stone and hopefully you know regards well and you know, by the coach's decision, you know, the next local, which is a, a couple months from now, you know, I will factor in and, you know, I just hope to do great things there also. Uh, actually, not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah the know. last Gold Cup, how you feel coming out of that Gold Cup? Because to me, you come out of a better play. As I said, you is one of the most folded players and stuff. How do you feel when you leave that tournament? To be honest, um, that, that was actually a turning point, you know, my, you know, my entire career. Um, played against some of the top players, you know, as when um, Polish at that time, Western McKinney, uh, that's playing for Juventus now, you know, and everyone who know Polish and you have a couple others, you know, Cooper that was playing for Panama, um, who else? Uh, Bakuna that was playing in the Premier League that played for Cure. So, you know, playing against those players at that level, and then when you realize like international football is three times what people think as if you're playing for your club, like the pace is faster, it's more physical, you know, decision making has to be better. Um, you have less time than you think. And it's a lot more running. <laughs> but a lot of people outside looking in you know, might say, yeah, you know, like, why I'm never turning the ball so Why I'm never pass the ball so But trust me, international football is three to five times harder, much faster, more physical than club football. Yeah, a lot of people think international football is easy, but 
it's a yeah, different it's no, it's no joke, man. It's, like, it's a different pace, different level to it. Like, what I know, you know, a lot of people have seen this. Why, why a lot of people question how you know a player plays a good film club or when a national team, you know, you know, see that type, see that thing, um player there like a player. So at the, at the your club team, you have more time and space. Everybody know what you do in other leagues. So everybody give you that respect. At the international level, it doesn't matter who you be. People are gonna tackle you. People are in your lace. You know, we get the time and space. Especially if they know what you can do. Like it's a total different ball game. You know, and I don't think people really understand that. My realization of that was, I think, um, uh, my second game in the World Cup. You know, I think we play. Uh, um, El Salvador in a youth and we actually got one of the match of that Gold Cup game. That game there was, I think if not, was one of the hardest games I've played, you know, being a professional. And it was just non-stop running. Like, the El Salvador and them giving no time and space on the ball. Them quick, them fast. Them are going to move the ball when them have it. Them do everything. Them take the box with everything. You know, in the game there was Another game, you know, to the next level and to see, you know, I was actually um, awarded the man of the match for that game, you know, was a really, you know, uh, proud moment for me um, to see my game, you know, growing and stuff. But definitely that Gold Cup, you know, is one to remember. And I would say that really set the tone for me when it comes on to the international football level. And, you know, I was playing multiple positions, which... You know, a lot of people, you know, I know may ask sometimes, like, why is he playing in the middle? Why is he not there? Why? But, you know, the coach realized, you know, I'm a utility player and I can play, you know, more than one position. So, you know, I'm not from a country. So, I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm a winger. Technically, I'm a, I'm a forward. I am only can play this. So, like, you know, if a job needs to be done, you know, in the middle of the park or at a different position, yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do it because I'm a country at the end of the day. You know, put... You know, me can play forward or me can score goal aside. You know, but more think about the, you know, the wider version of it of you representing 2.7 million people wearing that jersey. You know, it's more than you being selfish of wanting to play a position that you think, you know, maybe a preferred position but not beneficial to the team at that point in time. Most definitely. How do you feel about this season so far in your club team at this moment? Well, uh, this season so far, um, uh, we all got off to a, you know, a slow start. You know, I, I just played one game uh, so far, two games so far. I think so. It's still early in the season and a lot of people <laughs> might not know, but the league definitely get harder and harder because everybody know, you know, who Junior Fleming is right now. And, you know, when we get a ball, like, if you look two, three men just appear to nowhere, you know, um, everybody a double team, you know, it's just harder. And for me, I'm just have to step up my game and not work on my craft of being, you know, a little more intelligent, you know, outsmart, you know, what when two defenders come, you know, what if, you know, them playing with five in the back and, you know, but there's been a lot of tactics, there's been a lot of things going on and even before I receive the ball in the games, you can realise that, you know, the coaches be telling these players things, you know, because I remember playing against, that was my first game of the season, playing again with a team called Memphis, you know, when I received the ball, you know, the coach was like, remember what you tell telling the film, like, you know, remember, so I'm like, you know, there and then it looked like they were working on something or they tell him, you know, how to approach him in terms of that game. So, but everyone is, is doing their homework. And like I said, you know, it's only going to get harder. So what I have to do now is if I used to do something that, you know, like 10, I have to double it up and make it be 20 now, you know, because everyone is coming. Everyone know what I can do in the league. And like I said, like, the stats is there to show up. You know, at 24 years old, you know, scored 50 goals in the league. You know, the youngest player to ever done that in the entire league. You know, it's, it's a huge thing. So, I can say, everybody, you know, know me, well known that the league knows. So, you know, just I get harder and harder and harder. So, but I like the challenge and, 
you know, I'm going to embrace it and hopefully this year, you know, we can do great things and then from there on out, you know, we'll see where um, the future is at the end of the season. How you feel about this current Reggae Boys team? What do you guys think you guys can do? Win the Gold Cup, qualify for the World Cup. When you look at the some of the core set of players like Andre Blake, Julia Flemings, a lot of them, Leon Bailey, Shaman Nichols, uh, Alvas Paul, Kimar Taxi Lawrence, Mariapa. It's a good look. Do you guys think you guys can win the Gold Cup or qualify for the World Cup? The crap up most, mix most definitely. Um, um, the squad way beyond talented. Um, we have enough players, you know, we can get the job done. We have depth, you know. Me personally, you know, as a player that's within the group, like my daddy and C, and we can achieve great things. And it's just for us now to get those you know, friendly international game under our belt that gel together, you know, play with each other a lot more, train with each other, get, you know, a lot more, you know, time together. So I think really and truly at a, at a chemistry day, I will make the difference because playing, the talent, you know, the type of players we have, you know, those are fundamental. We all come down back to if we know that gel, the chemistry day, the togetherness day, all of that. You know, now nah go look like say we can't play ball. And lastly, you know, we need the support of the the entire Jamaica behind me. You know, regardless of what. Um, Barcelona, pretty much everybody that's our Real Madrid are those teams that's all right. They them a top close, but what? Rome not building an idea. They never just get up and start win. They never just get up and start the great. So we, you know, need the support of them and. We have days where we lose, we have days where we win, we have days where you know when we play good, we have days where we play bad. Nobody not perfect. We are all human beings. So once we have that support, then we are work together to make it better. I think you know the sky is the limit from there or not. Most definitely. What do you feel about the English player coming to the team? Player like um, Andre Gray. You have a next one that um, low that play striker for Swansea City. And what do you feel about? the English player coming. Do you think you are you worried you're not going to get enough game time because are you ready for fight for your game? No, um as a player growing up, um nothing is being handed to me like every team I'm actually play for like when my god there was always a player that is a regular starter, like is a player where um play a lot of minutes and and let me say, like, growing up, what was my tool outside of scoring and assisting was work on, my work ethics. So even if I not score, I not assist, I'm going to run till my job down. I just made that. I'm going to work hard. And feel threatened, like, no. Never feel threatened about a player because, as I say, like, I know what I can do and I have the self-esteem and the self-belief in terms of what I can do, in terms of going forward and... You know, once you work hard, you know, the sky's the limit and, you know, you can achieve endless things. How do you feel about the squad now? You're in this squad going to Japan. Do you think you guys can win one of these matches? Japan, Serbia? Yeah, I mean, as I said, you know, talent, you know, is no you know surprise to us um i think you know what we most importantly are trying to get out of these games is that togetherness try to get that chemistry of playing with one another understand each other understand who want the ball at feet who want the ball in the space you know and be, and develop that togetherness and then because these games basically are games that are preparing us for the gold cup and for the world cup qualifiers so if we can start and put a stamp on these games and getting a result, you know, that would be huge, you know, and get some positive um, from these games would be would be huge. So I think, you know, there, there are two quality games, two quality teams. Um, it's no rocket science. The game is not going to be easy. 
because we're playing against, you know, good players. You know, these both of these teams have ranked in the top 30. So this is not, you know, no Caribbean team we're playing against, you know, no disrespect to like Antigua or Bahamas at night. No. This is top level football, you know, that's gonna be played. So we have to make sure so we're ready and ready for match intensity and everyone have to just go out there and work, you know, tirelessly and just give it them all. Most definitely. All I want the JFF to do is just give Theodore Whitmore the tools he need to have to accomplish the goal we need. World Cup win it. We has been runners up two times. We don't need no more second place. We need winning the Gold Cup. This is when we're going to get carpet Jamaica bearing us. We need to start to win stuff. Tournament like this, we need to start to win. Qualify for the World Cup. We have a very good team. I think this is the best squad. We have ever have but squad depth, you know what I mean? It's look very good and it it, it promising right now to be a regular boy supporter and Flemo Junior, I just want to tell you Bridget, thank you for coming and take the time out and share the story with us. Just want to tell you just continue work very hard. You're a talented guy, you work hard, work hard. I want to see you in the endless hour. Who knows? One day in Europe, Belgium, because you have the ability, you have everything, you know. Always work on your weakness, you know, and keep on working on what you're stronger. Many people think they must just work on their, um, their weakness alone. Work on what you're good at and make it much more better. And all of these players are double up with you in the USL. Just deal with them like we deal with few players. <laughs> on it, Garden, Boy Stone, all like <laughs> this team, you know. Remember, you score a free kick against on it, Garden. Yeah. Man. And also, I think that Monday night, I think everybody Monday remember that Monday night, that, that 3 2 win then, and the last half where we get the one that, like, from offline and, you know, dribble of the entire field and score in the last play of the game. I think the other day, we even said, <laughs> which I primarily played up. You know, I never say I remember, you know, this and stuff, but, you know, that I think it has been one of the moments that have been written in history, you know, and I've definitely remember that moment, you know, representing and playing for Tiwara Garden. Most definitely. How oh, important any playing your career grade? Uh, a lot of people may not know, but it was vital, like, he was the center of everything. Um, Maybe, you know, nobody... You know, would have thought you know he would have been that um, um, pivotal in terms of my development. Like he was there, right? Sure. You know, he used to check in on me. You know, weekly. You know, ask. You know, we used to meet up. You know, ask to um, go by him, and you know, in terms of having meetings and stuff like that. But he was there, right? Sure. Like for my entire career, while. You know, he was alive, you know, rest in peace to him. You know, he was there. And a lot of people, I don't, I don't think, know that we had that relationship. You know, he played a vital part in my career and my development uh, through the Tivoli Garden system. Most definitely. I know that because he watch, he come and watch a few of game them, especially, I think you guys play a final over Boystone at one time. And yeah. This is the first time I see Eddie come and watch a different from the senior team. You know, he probably <laughs> done that I didn't see. But I know Eddie always play a very important part in most of the young, su- successful um, Tivoli Garden player. But Flemo, I appreciate the come and take the time. What do you have to say to your fans? And what do you have to say to the people I'm in West Kingston? Um, you know, just keep, you know, support and, you know, keep positive, you know, at all time, like, you know, no matter what, you know, keep a positive frame of mind, a positive mindset, and try to think positive at all times. You know, even if you think there's a bad situation, try to take the positive out from it. And your attitude determines your altitude. So what that simple means, you know, what you put in to get out, you know, what you're willing to sacrifice, you know, what you're willing to give up to get to where you want to get to. You know, so I'll just leave that, you know, here and, you know, 
be safe. You know, most importantly, you know, you know, we're still going through the COVID process and stuff, but you know, everyone be safe and you know, take care and you know, keep doing the thing. Enough respect, Regina. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very yeah, much. Man. Viewers, if you want to watch more Reggae Boys content, see the playlist there. Why not click on the playlist? I have a lot of exclusive interview. Go check out the latest interview I do with Andre Blake and stuff and check out a few more interviews and make sure you like the video, share the video, subscribe. Until next time, for your boy Ryan LFC, I like to say, peace out. Thanks for watching.